I'm Brooke Baldwin, and welcome back to the CNN Newsroom. Breaking news right now, in France today, the government announced the arrest of five terror suspects who French authorities believe were recently trained in Pakistan and were planning a deadly strike in Paris. Now, these arrests come weeks after Osama bin Laden says France's ban on the full-phase Islamic veil will cause attacks on the country. And listen to this, a frightening disclosure for us in the U.S. today. That package bomb sent from Yemen last month, that was timed to explode in a plane over the east coast of the United States. This revelation comes from Scotland Yard. Let's get right to CNN. Susan Candiotti, uh, she's in New York for us on this latest bomb plot development. So, Susan, not only does this really further confirm what a lot of authorities had already put out there, not only do we, did we you know, suppose that this would have exploded over the U.S., but this is also furthering the fact that this, is, this was a ticking time bomb. We now know when it would have detonated. That's right, and now we're getting more precise information. First of all, from a U.S. counterterrorism official telling us, uh, telling CNN exclusively, that this bomb was set to go off roughly six to seven hours or so once that plane took off, bound for the United States. And we want to further tell you this. Remember, we're talking about a printer cartridge in which some 300 grams of PETN, an explosive, was found in a package that was sent from Yemen onto the UA, a few others, uh, UK, and then onto the United States. But then we have this statement from Scotland Yard, and they said the activation, this is a quote, the activation could have occurred over the eastern seaboard of the United States. Now, what this means is, we're talking about a timeline here. This package, again, originated in Yemen, made a stop in Germany, went on to the UK, then authorities there isolated the package, but it took them several hours before they actually first disrupted the package using careful language and then determined, in fact, what they had on their hands, this explosive. But once they isolated the package, that cargo plane that was supposed to have the package took off within a couple of hours and then headed to the United States. Now, the route that it probably would have taken most likely would have been over Newfoundland, Halifax, over Cape Cod, and eventually that cargo plane was supposed to land in Philadelphia and then go on to Chicago. So that fits in with what the Scotland Yard statement is saying about the explosion would have occurred somewhere over the eastern seaboard of the United States. Now, this chilling information prompted a statement from the White House, and we'll read that to you in part. It says, quote, the findings underscore the serious nature of the attempted AQAP, that's Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, attack and the challenge we all face in trying to prevent or disrupt such attacks. And that is because, Brooke, that authorities have acknowledged that if it had not been for an intelligence tip, they wouldn't have found this package because it went through all the normal security, all the packages having been screened, but none of that security picked up the explosives inside right. that printer cartridge. Right. We've talked Work. to so many people and, and terrorism experts and people in the know, and they say this is the perfect example of how intelligence sharing is supposed to work. Didn't work so well with uh, Abdul Muttalib over Christmas Day, the underwear bomber, if you will. But this is how it's supposed to work. Susan, quick point of clarification, then I want to follow up. So when you say we're, we're hearing from Scotland Yard that this thing would have detonated six to seven hours after the plane took off, am I to assume the plane taking off in Yemen or the plane taking off in the U.K.? The plane taking off from the U.K., and then continuing its journey to onto US. Philadelphia, and then eventually onto Chicago. Let's let's. So we really don't know, Brooke. Yeah. What would where would have been when eventually that bomb could have exploded? Would it be coming over land, over water, over a highly populated area, less populated area? So it would have done more more likely than not than taking out just the plane and the crew, but also could have resulted in the deaths of people on the ground as well, depending on where it came down. Maximizing casualties. Also, Susan, you know, as we've talked mm -hmm. a lot about how every single attempt, uh, the bombs itself are increasingly sophisticated, but then you also have to look at the timing of this. And we've been reporting last week, the week before, about how there was talk of that dry run uh, in mid-September, those packages, you know, that were sent from Yemen to Chicago, where these two planes were headed uh, two Fridays ago. And so I imagine this perhaps would have been how they would have determined the timing in this most recent attempt. In fact, that's right. In fact, officials have acknowledged 
that those flights in September they discovered were in fact meant to be dry runs. Mm. But again, when whenever you send a, a package, and, and CNN has tested this as well, there are so many variables at play here. It's impossible to really nail down what plane the box would have gotten on, how many times it changes flights, and sometimes, as, as you're, I'm sure, well aware, if something doesn't fit on one plane, it gets put on another plane. Sure. So one suspects that even the bomb makers weren't exactly sure uh, when it might have gone off. Let's talk about the bomb maker. I know we're hearing, we've been saying this name a whole lot, Ibrahim Hassan al -Asiri. He is the man believed to, to put his, essentially, put his brother to death in an attempt to, to kill a Saudi prince. That was unsuccessful. Uh, behind the Abdul Muttalib uh, attempted bombing, the underwear right. bombing this past Christmas Day. And now this. Do we know any more about him? And are they any closer in finding him? I know he's hiding out somewhere in Yemen. That's what they believe. What about him? That's what they believe. And of course, they're not only looking for him, and he's 28 years old. They're not only looking for him for obvious reasons, but also they're looking for Anwar al Alaki, who is the American born cleric mm. who they also believe has inspired so many of these plots. Also believed to be hiding in Yemen. Yemen authorities say that they are trying to find these people. Uh, they've also instituted additional security screenings at their airports there. Uh, but so far, uh, the people that are believed to be responsible and behind these attacks are still in hiding somewhere. Still in hiding. The motivation certainly does not change. Susan Candiotti, we thank you for getting some of that information confirmed for us just for CNN. Susan, thank you.